Hey guys, this presentation is going to teach you all about Earth's ocean tides. So here's the standards that I need to get across and uh, what I hope to accomplish during this presentation. So if you'd like to pause and review, feel free. Here's some uh, critical terms that uh, I'm going to use during this presentation that um, I want you to be familiar with. So if you'd like to pause and define and review them, um, I encourage you to do so. So the main idea is Earth's ocean tides are caused by gravity. It's that simple. Um, what we're going to do is kind of examine a little bit more closely the fact that both the sun and the moon influence the ocean tides that Earth has every single day. And that as the moon revolves around the Earth, uh, these tides are extremely predictable. And um, I'd like you to learn why. So let's start with just gravity, really simple. It is a force that pulls. All objects with mass in the universe pull on one another um, depending on how massive they are, like our sun, or their distance. So, for example, planets that are closer to the sun are uh, pulled harder by the force of gravity from the sun, and uh, planets that are further away um, experience less pull from the sun. So both mass and distance influence the force of gravity, and that's going to be really important because even though the sun is really massive, uh, the distance the moon is from the Earth actually causes the moon to exhibit a greater force on Earth's ocean tides. We'll learn that later on. So the basic principles of gravity are the more massive an object is, the greater its gravitational pull, such as the sun. Objects that are closer have a greater gravitational pull, such as the moon on Earth's tides. Less massive objects have a weaker gravitational pull. So, you know, I don't exert a very strong gravitational pull on other objects because I simply don't have a very large mass. And neither does any person. But the farther objects are from one another, the weaker their gravitational attraction. So, you know, planets maybe like Neptune don't exhibit a great force on planet Earth simply because they're far away. And, you know, maybe they do have less mass. But the closer you are, the greater the gravitational attraction. The more massive you are, the greater the gravitational attraction. So what are ocean tides? Um, since we live at the beach, we're pretty familiar with why the Earth has tides. Um, but it's simply, you know, every single day there are high tides and low tides. And um, I think a lot of us are familiar with tides. Um, but I don't want to take that for granted, but there is a very predictable pattern that you can um, examine each and every day of when there's going to be high tide and low tides. So this time lapse video is um, interesting and I wanted you to see it because it shows, first of all, it starts off at high tide and you can see that the water is receding and creating a low tide. and um, so that's one high tide and one low tide in a single day so far. And now you can see that the water is now rising to another high tide in the same day. And so that's two high tides. And then what I hope to see is that the water will again recede to another low tide all within 24 hours. So what this video, what I wanted you to see is not only how incredible the force must be in order to move all of that water. I mean, think about how heavy a bucket of water is. I mean, the force of gravity pulling on Earth's water like that is just must be tremendous. And I also want you to see that there are, you know, at least two high tides and two low tides in a single day. So the next step is both the sun and the moon both influence Earth's tides. Yes, the sun is far away from Earth, 93 million miles, but it does have a incredible mass and it does affect Earth's tides. For example, if you just took the moon out of the picture, Earth would still have tides because of the pull of the sun. Yeah, they wouldn't be as extreme. And yes, the moon certainly influences Earth's tides and does pull on Earth's water. Um, and it has a greater influence than the sun. Um, but I wanna acknowledge the fact that both the sun and the moon 
um, influence Earth's tides. So because the moon is closer to the Earth, even though it's significantly, immensely less massive than the sun, just because the moon is so close to Earth, it has a greater pull on Earth's ocean tides. So the sun is 93 million miles away. Um, the moon is only a quarter of a million miles away. And that's why it pulls on Earth more and vice versa, because the Earth is certainly pulling on the moon. Um, so according to this infographic, the sun is only pulling 3% of the, you know, the force of the moon's pull, but it still does influence Earth's tides. And as you guys are going to see is when the moon revolves and there's actually an alignment of the sun, Earth and moon, you're going to see a more dramatic influence on the ocean tides compared to when the moon and the sun are actually competing with one another. But I'll get to that later. So since the moon is so much closer to the Earth than the sun, the moon does have a greater pulling effect on Earth's ocean tides despite the enormous mass of the sun. So that just shows you how distance um, plays a huge part in the force of gravity. So what we're going to talk about is we're going to use words like tidal bulges. So the water that's actually directly towards the moon is going to be creating a tidal bulge because the moon is literally pulling the water closer to it. And what's interesting is that not only is the moon pulling the water because it's fluid and it's easily more movable than, you know, objects that aren't fluid, is the moon will also pull the earth. And what we find is that on the opposite side of the planet, we also see another high tide. So what I want you to start noticing is that you have a high tide clearly towards the moon, depending on where it is in its orbit around earth. Then on the far side of Earth, you have another tidal bulge because the Earth literally moves towards the moon as well, just leaving this water behind. And this water isn't affected by the force of gravity from the moon as much. And then what we're going to go over in a little bit is that here are your low tides because this water is actually being pulled towards the moon, creating this high tide. So here is a tidal bulge. And here is the other high tidal bulge if the moon is in this position. And then the two low tides are in between where the water is being pulled away. And then what we're going to talk about is Earth is rotating every 24 hours. So what you're going to see is that we rotate into the high tide, rotate into a low tide, rotate into a high tide, rotate into a low tide every 24 hours. So here are your tidal bulges. I want you to be familiar with those words because we're going to use them quite a bit. So one important detail that I want to make sure I get across that, you know, is so important is that we experience two high tides and two low tides every single day. It doesn't matter where the position of the moon or sun is. Um, we experience two high tides and two low tides every day. Now, the, the ex, you know, how extreme these tides are does depend on where the earth, moon and sun are. But every day we rotate into two high tides and two low tides every single day. So it's really important that you understand that, you know, when we start analyzing moon phases and its moon's orbit around the earth, you're going to see more extreme high tides or more extreme low tides, depending on their position. But every single day we always experience high tides and low tides. In fact, we experience two every single day, regardless of the moon's position. So let's talk about, you know, as the moon is revolving around Earth, it does create a difference in the tidal bulges and, you know, how extreme these tides are. So what's going on is when you have the sun, the moon, and the Earth in a straight line, the gravity of the moon and the sun will both combine and create a larger high tide, a course facing the moon. There's also a larger high tide on the opposite side because the Earth is being pulled even more, leaving all this water behind. And because the moon and the sun are pulling the water so much, it's going to create lower low tides. These are called spring tides. And the way I remember that is spring are strong tides and the alignment is straight. So spring, strong, straight. Now what happens is as the moon revolves, you're going to get positions like these quarter moon phases. In this case, it looks like third quarter where the sun and the moon are at right angles to each other. And what happens is, is now the moon's pulling water this way and the sun's pulling water a little bit this way. And it kind of just evens out the tides a little bit. Yes, there's still a high tide and yes, there's still a high tide, 
And yeah, there's still low tides. They're just not as extreme. These are called meep tides. And the way I remember that is meep is not strong, not straight, 90 degrees. Meep, not strong, 90 degrees. And the angle of the sun, earth, and moon is not straight. In fact, it's 90 degrees. So I'm going to elaborate on this a little bit more. But what's good about this picture is you can see the tidal bulges here. The high tides are higher and the low tides are lower. And over here with the neap tides, you can see the low tides aren't as low and the high tides aren't as high. And when the moon is in these phases, we know precisely what the high tides and low tides are going to be and what times they'll occur. So here's just a depiction of exactly what's going on with spring tides. So when the sun, earth, and moon are in straight lines, spring, strong, straight, you will get higher high tides and lower low tides. We always have high tides and low tides every single day as the earth rotates. But when we have a full moon, we could totally expect there to be um, the most extreme high tides and the most extreme low tides. And when, you know, it's in the new moon phase, again, it's spring, strong, straight. You got the sun, the moon, and the earth all in alignment. It's going to create the force of gravity is going to pull more because you got the moon and the sun working together and you create a higher tidal bulge on either side of the earth and lower low tides. Neap tides um, are when the sun, earth, and moon are not in alignment or at a 90 degree angle, which happens during these quarter moon phases. And you can see the high tides are still there. They're just not as high. And the low tides are there. They're just not as low. These are neap, not strong, not straight, 90 degrees. So when we're at these, you know, right angles, you got the moon pulling water, you know, this way, and you got the sun pulling against, you know, the, the pull of the moon, and they kind of compete with one another. So you got lower high tides and higher low tides. The tides are just kind of evened out a little bit. They're not as extreme. So if I go back to spring tide, you could see these are super extreme. You got extremely high high tides and really, really low low tides. But when I go back to neap tides, I still have high tides, but they're not as high. And I still have low tides. They're just not as low. And that happens when they're in the quarter moon phases. So here's over the course of a month, you could see the major moon phases that influence the tides. You got a new moon, which would experience a spring tide. Quarter moons is neap tides. You know, the third week, you know, you're going to start seeing, again, another spring tide, quarter moon. And over the course of a month, we'll be back to the, you know, moon, new moon phase. So over the course of a month, you're going to see two spring tides and two neap tides. And because the moon phases are so predictable, you know, you could determine when they're going to occur. So what I really like about this infographic is the fact that it demonstrates that during spring tides, high tides are super high and low tides are really, really low. Every single day we have tides. But in this case, when the sun, earth and moon are in alignment, you get really, really high tides and really, really low, low tides. So we call those more extreme tides. But during neap tides, like here at week two and four, the high tides aren't as high and the low tides aren't as low. The tidal ranges just aren't as extreme. So here's another depiction of spring, uh, spring tides, spring strong straight. Here you can see the tidal bulges created by the moon and the sun are both adding up, creating a larger high tide and lower low tides. And the earth is rotating every single day. In this next picture, you could see that it's a neap tide because it's not strong and not straight. So now you got the sun and the moon competing with one another. You could see the moon tidal bulges are now you know, in these positions, and you could see the solar tidal bulges are now evening out the tides a little bit more. So the high tides aren't as high and the low tides aren't as low. And I want you to learn these moon phases and what kind of tides that you will experience during these, whether they're spring or neap. So fact, every year the moon is moving away from Earth. Now, I'm not sure about that precise number, but you know, everything that I can learn about the moon is it is, you know, receding from Earth. So in that case, if the moon is moving away from Earth, how will that affect the force of gravity? Since the distance is getting greater, we can expect that the effect on okay, Earth's kids, tides. At that time, 4.40, car riders go to the car rider's side, bus riders to the bus riders side. Have a great afternoon. You can expect the force of gravity to be less because now the distance is greater. So in this diagram, you can see that if you analyze them carefully and you eliminate answers, 
you're going to see that the tidal bulges should be towards the moon. So I would not pick A. Here, high tide wouldn't occur on the opposite side of the moon. I mean, it does, but you would certainly have a high tide facing the moon. So I would not pick C. In this case, I'm not really sure what's going on. Yeah, you would have a high tide facing the moon. Um, and you would have a high tide on the far side of the earth because it's pulling the earth towards the moon, but I don't know what these other tides here are for. So B is definitely our best answer here because you got a tidal bulge towards the moon and this one left behind as it pulls towards the earth. In this diagram, you got the greatest tidal bulge will certainly be spring strong straight. So now you got A, and C would create the greatest tidal ranges. These are your spring tides. This is when the sun and the moon are gonna pull on the earth and combine their forces and create larger high tides and lower low tides, more extreme tides. And in positions D and B, you're gonna see neat tides where the sun and the moon are competing and the tides won't be as extreme. You'll still have high tides and low tides every day. They're just not as extreme. In this picture, I think the best question to ask would be like, when would this person experience the highest tides? And in that case, you know, when you are aligned with the moon, this is a person that would be in a high tide. Yeah, there's a high tide over here and there's some, then the low tides would be here. If we analyze picture B, the high tide would be towards the moon. So the tidal bulge should be here. There would be a tidal bulge on the far side of earth and this person would be in a low tide. And there's another low tide over here. These are a little bit harder to analyze because the high tide would be right here. A high tide would be right here. Depending on which way the earth is rotating here, he's rotating into a low tide or possibly a high tide. He's kind of in between. Same thing on this one. There's a high tide right here towards the moon. There's a high tide over here on the far side of earth. This guy's pretty much in a low tide here. And I want you to be able to analyze pictures like that. In this picture, I'm probably going to ask you something like, you know, what kind of tides would they experience? And since we experience high tides and low tides every day, the best answer would be like, well, they're in a straight alignment, spring, strong, straight. So this would be a full moon phase. We would, we would expect and know that we would have spring tides, which would be extremely high tides and very, very low, low tides. In this diagram, you can see that the sun, earth, and moon are not in alignment. So what's happening is the sun's pulling the water this way and the moon's pulling the water this way. The moon has a greater, you know, force on the earth because it's closer. And um, every day we have two high tides and two low tides. But in this case, we're going to, we're going to expect neat tides, not straight, not strong, 90 degrees. The low tides aren't too low. The high tides aren't too high because the sun and the moon are competing with one another. And this happens during quarter moon phases. So maybe you'll see diagrams like this, where I could ask you whether spring or neap or any combination. And there's a lot of different questions you could ask with a diagram as simple as this. So in general, maybe the answers would be like, well, okay, you have C and A um, would have high tides. This is where your high tides would be because the moon, the there'd be a tidal bulge facing the moon and there'd be a tidal bulge on the far side. And then B and D would be your low tides. So in conclusion, the force of gravity does depend on the mass and distance between two objects, such as the Earth, sun, and moon. The force of gravity um, does influence planetary orbits and their speeds and certainly influences Earth's ocean tides. Because the moon is closer to Earth, um, it does have a greater impact on Earth's ocean tides compared to um, the more massive sun. When the Earth, sun, and moon are aligned in a straight line, the force of gravity adds up and creates more extreme high and low tides during new and full moon phases. Those are called spring tides. When the Earth, moon, and sun are at right angles to one another, the force of gravity between the moon and the sun compete with one another during quarter moon phases, creating less extreme high and low tides. Um, those are called neat tides. I hope this was helpful.